Hi, my name is Jeff Carter. Cheryl and Madeline have invited me to talk about my Thrilla in Manila mashup from the January 2013 issue of Kairos. My work was largely produced on an iPad 2, and I think it's the novelty of this medium, along with the significant revisions that I undertook, that has led to this invitation to reflect on my invention process. As I talk, I'll be showing some behind-the-scenes aspects of my filmmaking. Some of the scenes will include my daughter Vivian, who, in addition to being more photogenic than me, plays a role in my commentary. The work you're viewing has been produced both on an iPad and MacBook Pro. Below, you can see the glow of my MacBook keyboard, and above, you can see the rectangular iPad size glare of light coming into my otherwise dark basement window. My desire to produce a work based on a premise of simplicity extends back to a piece I did for the 2008 Manifesto issue of Kairos. That collection featured a movie I produced for the 2006 Four Seas Conference in Chicago. It's here where my story really begins. This early work was my attempt to put a Marcel Duchamp-like spin on various images of a paper plate. What I wanted to show in Plates, Pleats, Petals effort was a simple yet complex style of rhetorical invention with a ready-made object. In my current Thrilla presentation, I wanted to explore boxing basics on a simple video editing platform, a platform that is as thin as a small stack of paper plates. In Plates, Pleats, Petals, I used a play of name strategy to make connections. For example, I used Jeff Sirk's name to suggest a style of circuitry. In my Thrilla presentation, I use Muhammad Ali's signature to connect to MLA, a conference known for its study of language and poetry. Since MLA also considers issues connected to class and race, I decided to explore these themes as well. In 2007, I made my first trip to the MLA conference in Philadelphia for job interviews. I was struck by the grittiness of this city and the broad appeal of the Rocky statue. Later, as I began to work in a hard-hit working-class area near the I-75 corridor that extends from Saginaw to Flint and Detroit, I started thinking more about Philadelphia and the suppressed legacies of Chuck Wepner and Joe Frazier. Editing video on an iPad 2 presents a challenge. The iPad doesn't allow one to import converted videos. As a result, everything has to be loaded into its editor through live capture. I set up my iPad and MacBook facing each other to capture YouTube footage. For sound, I set speakers behind the iPad and I later manually adjusted the sound clip by clip. The advantage to all this prep work is that once everything is loaded, editing on a tablet like the iPad offers a very portable and intuitive experience. I first adopted this method of composing for the 2011 Western States Conference presentation I gave with Jeff Sirk and Sarah Arroyo. For it, I wanted to make a movie about nomadic musics. With the birth of my daughter, I found that my work, too, was a nomadic one. As a new parent, I found it more and more difficult to work on my own, even with the relatively portable MacBook. The iPad was simply more adaptable to the rocking chair I often found myself in. To be sure, my Western States movie, Expatriating Place from the Parisian Salons to the Sunset Strip, is now very difficult to return to and edit. It survives in a suspended state on YouTube. I had to delete all of the clips from my iPad to make way for my Thrilla in Manila. And it's with this in mind that I knew, even before I started making this video that would be featured in Seattle, that if it did not find a place in an online journal like Kairos, it would eventually be deleted and consigned to YouTube, published yet perished. The first version of my movie clocked in at a whopping 22 minutes. It was impossible to export to YouTube given YouTube's 12-minute time restriction. For emergency, I used a digital camera to back up my effort and export it in two segments to YouTube through my MacBook. 
At the Seattle MLA conference itself, I was able to display an uninterrupted version of my iPad film by using an adapter to plug into a 50-inch monitor provided by the conference. Cheryl visited our eight-person gallery, and I remember she was quite enthusiastic about her efforts. If you haven't already, be sure to check out Bonnie Kybers' Screen Cube to catch a glimpse of Cheryl. Cheryl did, however, remind me that my earlier plates, pleats, pedals effort had run nearly as long, and it needed to be trimmed significantly for the manifesto issue. And it was with this in mind, when I returned home from Seattle, that I knew I was going to need to keep my work on my iPad for the next year. For there is no getting around the fact that a, the multi-stage review process that Kairos uses takes nearly a year from start to finish. And this brings me to another challenge about editing work on a tablet like an iPad, especially with a curious one-year-old. Since there is no way to back up files, and because imported video can be so easily deleted, I wasn't sure if the work I did for Seattle would survive to publication. Viv loves the iPad, and I love letting her explore it. Despite my best efforts to keep tabs on her explorations, though, I would sometimes find her watching the Ali footage that I had imported. Sometimes she even opened the iMovie editor. While Viv often seems to know what she is doing on the iPad, whether it's watching videos of herself on YouTube or using Netflix to watch Curious George, I couldn't help but wonder if she might not un unintentionally, of course, delete my project. Indeed, the prospect had me thinking of a presentation that Sarah Arroyo, my writing partner on a number of video-related projects, was preparing for the 2012 Computers and Writing Conference. Her Coric Swipe, which is featured in this Inventio piece, in fact it's playing right now, looks at how the interface of the tablet is connected to the activity of erasure. Arroyo writes that, quote, If we use erasing as a metaphor for what swiping is doing to writing, a dilemma emerges. If erasing is now creating through the gesture of the swipe, we are literally erasing the necessity of writing with a utensil or keyboard and making the bodily gesture the instigator of creative process. Thought about in this manner, the swipe opens up potential for interacting with the physical world that has not yet been possible. On the tablet, the swipe literally unlocks the potential of the interactive world. Instead of erasing, it turns on, it creates, it instigates. End quote. And it's this gesture, this swipe, that makes me realize that whatever happens to my clips, other potentialities will be unlocked. Recomposings by way of and after the swipe. And so, when Cheryl, Virginia Kuhn, Robert Leston, and the editors at Kairos encouraged my thrill in Manila revision, I was ready. I was ready to swipe. I did a number of versions, both with and without title cards. The process of my multiple revisions can still be found on YouTube under the name SVSU GV Carter. There's something about the impermanence of composing on the iPad itself that seems to welcome all these variations. Revision was never more fluid. Indeed, one final composing note. At the end of my movie, I wanted Brian Eno's ascent to play as Stallone mounted the steps of the Philadelphia Art Museum. I wanted this music to cover over some existing audio, and I also wanted to evoke a sense of Eno's ambient space. The problem with the iMovie version that I was using for the iPad at the time was that it required me to play the entire track throughout the project, even if I only wanted a snippet of audio at the end. Eventually, I was able to individually adjust the volumes of each of my video clips to create the illusion of Eno's gradual ascent at the end. Despite composing limitations like this one, I think I'll continue to work on a tablet like the iPad. I hope this discussion of my invention process will spark other projects along these lines.